The first year of operations at Inter-Island Airways had gone well. Since the inaugural flight on November 11, 1929, a third nine-passenger Sikorsky S-38 amphibian had joined the fleet. This one had brakes. That first year, we carried 13,000 passengers, 2,000 of them on sightseeing tours in the Balanca pacemaker. Hangar number one had been built before the inauguration, and hangar number two had been purchased at auction following the demise of a competing airline, Hawaiian Airways. Office operations were run out of the small frame house placed between the two hangars. Ma'alea Airfield on Maui, which had been developed by Inter-Island Airways, had just been purchased by the Territorial Aeronautical Commission. When Ma'alea Field became too muddy, water landings were made in Kahului Harbor. Hilo Airfield had been improved. During bad weather, flights to Hawaii Island could be diverted to Upolu Point. The Kona District could only be served by water landings. There were small grass landing fields on Molokai, Lanai, and at Lihue on Kauai. Our flight division consisted of four captains, four mates, and a purser. There were four mechanics and an engine technician. By the end of 1931, another S-38 had been added to the fleet and the Balanca was being prepared for sale. The King of Siam and his entourage had taken a tour around Oahu in one of the S-38s. Radios were added to the aircraft during 1932. Soon the mates were making entries in the navigational logbooks every 15 minutes. Starting in June, one could take a Sunday excursion to Kauai, including a boat ride up the Wailua River for $25. The airfield at Port Allen was opened in April of 1934. On October 8, scheduled airmail service began. This made Inter-Island Airways a reliable way to transport mail between the islands and provided the company with a much-needed source of income. On January 6, 1935, Aviatrix Amelia Earhart joined Stan Kennedy's senior and junior with Captain Elliot for a flight to Hilo and then a drive up to Kilauea Volcano. Amelia and Stan Sr. planted a banyan tree on Banyan Drive before returning to Honolulu. By August, hangar number three had been erected beside hangar number one. It was needed to maintain the large airplanes which began to arrive in December. The Sikorsky S-43 had been designed for 19 passengers, but Kennedy opted for a 16-seat configuration, making it more comfortable for the passengers. This iconic amphibian had a 50-foot-long hull suspended beneath an 86-foot wingspan. Two 750-horsepower turbocharged engines spun the latest innovation in aircraft development, variable pitch propellers. As with the smaller S-38, Passengers entered the cabin from the top rear of the fuselage. By mid-year 1937, Inter-Island's fleet consisted of four S-38s and three S-43s. Sixteen pilots had been hired and the company employed about 20 mechanics and shop people. In early 1938, the regulators from the Bureau of Air Commerce determined that the airports at Lihue, Lanai, Molokai, Kalaupapa, Ma'alea, and Hana were all too short for the larger S-43s. As luck would have it, all of the S-38s were down for maintenance, leaving Maui County without air service for two weeks. Works Progress Administration money was spent upgrading territorial airports. Hilo Airport was expanded and Upolo Point was paved. A much larger airfield was opened on Maui at Pu'unene. In January of 1940, the Civil Aviation Authority began requiring pilots to be instrument rated. Furthermore, the chief pilot for any scheduled airline was required to have an approved instrument rating. Jimmy Hogue was the junior captain at the time, but the only one holding the required rating. So he became chief pilot, moving Captain Sam Elliott up to superintendent of flight operations. Stan Kennedy ran the company as president. A new improved model of the S-43 had been added to the fleet. Number 8 had a longer nose for stability and twin tails for better rudder control. This one was sold to the Royal Dutch Lines to help pay for even larger aircraft. Stan Kennedy worked out a deal with Douglas Aircraft Company in which the airline would buy three new aircraft that would be delivered to the islands in formation by Douglas pilots. 
The DC-3 was designed with a 1,500-mile range, so the 2,500 miles between Oakland and Honolulu forced Douglas to remove all the seats and install fuel bladders that would drain into the main tanks. Drums of oil could be pumped out to the engines. At 4.30 p.m. on August 27th, the formation of three shiny new DC-3s flew past Diamond Head, landing at John Rogers Airfield 15 minutes later before a crowd of very anxious airline executives and employees. Thousands of people cheered as the big 24-seat airplanes landed. As they taxied in, the crowd was not surprised to see the name Inter-Island Airways displayed over the wings, but Hawaiian Airlines was painted over the entry door as well as in a much larger font above the windows. On October 1, 1941, the name of the company was officially changed to Hawaiian Airlines. The future looked good for the small but growing airline, but war loomed on the horizon. Transportation has always been one of the principal problems of the people of the Territory of Hawaii. On behalf of the Territory of Hawaii, I accept from the Chamber of Commerce of Honolulu the gates at the entrance of the airport which are now in the process of being constructed. 